Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Shining Stars of Islam on Deen TV. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. Alhamdulillah, on this beautiful episode, we will be speaking and learning the facts and the life of the beautiful wife of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the pious mother of Islam, mother of the believers, Ummul Mu'mineen, Sayyida Zainab binti Jahash radiallahu ta'ala anha. But before we learn more on the life of this pious lady of Islam, let us praise and venerate Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Join me in this beautiful recitation. مولايا صلي وسلم دائما عبد على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولايا صلي وسلم دائما عبد على حبيبك خير الخلق Kulihimi Muhammadun 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 Sayyidul Kawnaini Wa Thaqalaini Wal Fariqaini Min Urubin Wa Min Ajami Mawlaya Salli Wa سلم دائما عبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مي. Recite one time Duru Sharif upon Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina. Alhamdulillah, now that each and every one of us are full of spiritual energy and each and every one of us have praised Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us learn the facts of the life of the coolness of the eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloveds of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are learning the life of Sayyida Zainab binti Jahsh. Who was this lady of Islam? Before we learn about this beautiful pious servant of Islam, let us recap that we first learned about Sayyida Khadijatul Kubra, the first wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We then learned about Sayyida Sauda, Sayyida Aisha, Sayyida Hafsa. And yes, there was a Sayyida Zainab, but that was not Sayyida Zainab binti Jahsh. And then we learned about Umm Salama. And Alhamdulillah, on this episode, we will learn about Sayyida Zainab binti Jahsh, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Indeed, one of the great ladies of Islam. Subhanallah. Let us first understand who is Sayyida Zainab. Sayyida Zainab is this personality that she is the daughter of Umayma. And who was Umayma? Umayma was the daughter of Abdul Muttalib, radiallahu ta'ala an, the grandfather of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdul Muttalib. So it was Umayma binti Abdul Muttalib. In other words, the aunt of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was her mother. The paternal aunt, the khala. And her dad was Jahsh. Her granddad was Abdul Muttalib. And her uncles was same as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Her uncles was Amir Hamza and Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. This made her the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyida Zainab binti Jahsh was the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And her brother was none other than the famous warrior of Islam, 
Abdullah bin Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala an. He was the reason that she entered into the fold of Islam. Remember in the early 30 years after Hijrah was the time of very difficulty. There was a lot of difficulty. It was the time before Hijrah, 30 years, that the Jahsh family had to make a decision where some of them were now influenced with becoming Muslim. And Abdullah was one of the very early Muslims. And he came to his sister and he said, Zainab, listen, I want you to become a Muslim, a Muslimah. And Zainab looked surprised and said, do you know what is happening? For those, and he explained, and Allahu Akbar, after explaining the beautiful deen of Islam, Zainab at once said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadun abdu wa rasooluh, la ilaha illallah, muhammadun rasulullah. In other words, she embraced Islam. And when she accepted Islam, subhanallah, she now started, not, she wasn't a lip service Muslim. I won't speak about yourself. I'm speaking of myself. I'm a lip service Muslim. How much can I dedicate of my practical life to the cause of Islam? Allahu Akbar. Sayyidah Zainab, when she became a Muslim, thereafter she would be on the musalla, thereafter she would be performing salah, thereafter she would be keeping fast, she would constantly keep herself involved in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She became someone that was devoted to the cause of Islam. And everything she did was only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything she did, she found a higher purpose that everything I do must be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. What actually transpired was he converted her to Islam. And now it came the time when the Muslims migrated. And they were feeling persecution. And remember, some of the Muslims were dragged naked onto the burning sand because they said, La ilaha illallah. Some of the early Muslims were tortured where their bodies were put on burning coal until the blood would extinguish the fire. Some of the Muslims were persecuted where they were put into straw mats and they were closed and covered and a fire was lit where the smoke would then lead to their death. Some of the Muslims were persecuted where they were whipped until their blood and their flesh would tear and the blood would come out. Some of the Muslims were persecuted like Sayyida Sumayyah, the first martyr of Islam, where her body parts were torn apart from her body. These are the trials that the Muslims needed to go through at the time when the Meccans would punish them because of saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. That makes us think, dear viewers of Deen TV, do you have to go through this? Is there anyone torturing you because you say, La ilaha illallah? Never! We live in a country that allows all religions. We live in a country where there is peace and tranquility. We live in a place where we are not forced into a religion. How honorable! That we can say Allahu Akbar and not be tortured. We can say La ilaha illallah and not be tortured. Yet we choose not to do so. Yet we choose to go away from our religion instead of practicing our religion. Allahu Akbar. That was not the case of Sayyida Zainab. Allahu Akbar. When they moved on, the Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw. There was a big thing between freed slaves and ordinary people. Although a person would be a slave, when they would be freed, no one would want to marry them. How can I marry a person that was a slave before? How can I marry a lady who was a slave and she was used by her master? Or how can I marry a man that was a slave and he was used and abused? I will not marry a slave. How can I marry a slave? And this was the barbaric manners, or this was the way of society at that time. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam needed to clean the minds of the people from this type of ideology. 
So now he started firstly to ban slavery. It's so ironic that some people say, when you become a Muslim, you become a slave. You become a boundman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is Islam that freed slavery. And Islam encouraged the freedom of slaves. That in every action, if you needed to pay, not a punishment, but if there's something you did and you needed to pay for it, what was the payment? It was if you broke your fast, okay, pay for a slave, free a slave, feed a slave, let a slave be free. These were the things to encourage freedom of slavery, freedom of those slaves. Allahu Akbar. Nevertheless, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now was encouraging slaves to be free. Al-Raqib and these different types of slavery would, where they would be able to pay for their freedom and some of them, the masters or other people would come. For example, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and Allahu Akbar, may Allah be pleased with him and may we learn from his actions. Subhanallah, Abu Bakr would go and he would free slaves. As many as possible. As he had wealth, he would free slaves. The moment he has wealth, he would go to a slave and he would say, how much does it cost to free the slave? And he would take the money and give it to their master and say, from today, you are free. And when he said you are free, he had no strings attached. That when I say you are free, I still need you to do this for me. When I say you're free, I still need you to do that for me. No, no, no. Allahu Akbar. I speak for myself. You know, it, uh, I, I run an organization, as we are well away, the CTIEC, Cape Town Islamic Educational Center, that is fully dependent on funds of people. Wallahi al sometimes there are some donors that if they have given you a hundred rand, then it means they own your life. If they've given you a thousand rand, if they've done a favor, not to you, they've done a favor to someone studying the deen, but they feel that they own your life. They can command you when they feel. They can ask you what they want, when they want. This is not the teachings of Islam. Dear Muslims, this is not the teachings of Islam. Look at Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and, and look at these people that freed slaves. When they freed them and gave them freedom, meaning their whole life, they never treat them as their slave again. Now the Habib sallallahu alayhi wasallam needed to show how is a person who's free now? He's free, but he can't get married. No one wants to marry him. No woman wants to marry him. No man wants to marry a woman. What happens? They also have lives. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to his cousin. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam made, freed a slave. His slave was Zaid. And all of us know Zaid was the adopted son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took care of him. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to his cousin. And he came and he said, Oh Zainab, I want you to marry Zaid bin Haritha radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Zainab was shocked. She was out of words and she said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you want me to marry a slave? You want me to marry? Yes, he is free, but I mean, he was a slave. I'm from a noble family. I'm from the family of Jash. We had, I have noble lineage from the Quraysh, the Banu Hashim. And you want me to marry a freed slave? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Zainab, this is the desire of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That by your marriage, people will understand that these people also have respect. These people also have worth. And Zainab did not want to marry out of her own pleasure. She said, no, I am from a noble family. But after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to her, about the sacrifices for Islam. Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha married Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha. <laughs> she tried her best, but the marriage never lasted for very long. Reason being, they were from two different worlds. He was coming from just being a slave now to freedom, and she was coming from a life full of freedom so therefore Rasulullah sallallahu also mentions to us in the hadith that we should marry upon our grouping. Uh, 
We should marry upon our, uh, um, our standards so that there can be compatibility in that marriage. And this is important. Nevertheless, Allah planned better. Zayd bin Haritha came to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, <coughs> I do not want to marry. I cannot, uh, I do not want to stay in this marriage. I don't feel I'm getting the respect that I should get. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam counseled and he tried, please keep the marriage and the verse of the Quran, fear Allah when it comes to your wives and various other things. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged, oh Zaid, keep your wife. Oh Zainab, keep your husband. But after some time, they divorced and had their separate ways. And it now came to the time where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was informed there was a custom that was also in society. And this custom was that no person would marry the wife of their adopted son. And uh, they found it very difficult. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was informed by Jibreel Amin. Oh Jibreel, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has already decided that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jibreel would come and he would say, Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm Jibreel, I'm mentioning to you the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah has decided that you and very soon Zainab bint Jahsh will be your wife and she will be under the banner of the mothers of Islam. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very concerned. What would the society say? What would the people say? How would he approach them? How would he be able to win their hearts when this is something that is against their nature? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desired that through a Nabi, you must get guidance. And part of this guidance was to stop these evil practices. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was ready, he spoke to Sayyidina Zaid, and Sayyidina Zaid was overjoyed. He said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I never ever desired that I will remain with Zainab, for indeed, I did not feel comfortable in this relationship. Oh Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am very happy if you would marry Zainab. And in fact, it is mentioned that Zayd bin Haritha brought the proposal of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he came and he said, Oh Zainab, she asked, what do you want? And he said, I want to give you glad tidings that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is proposing to take your hand in marriage. And Zainab looked shocked and she said, no, I cannot give an answer now. I need to first speak to my maker. I must speak to Rabbul Alameen. And this was the decision of Zainab. After a while, she accepted to be in the marriage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by this, the verses of the Quran were revealed where it abolished the system that a stepson, if he was married to a woman, that woman cannot be married to in that family and various other things were then cleared. And it also made it clear that Rasulullah there is a verse that Nabi is not the father of any man and etc. etc. It's, it's a long topic but we are here to discuss Sayyida Zainab binti Jahsh. So Rasulullah was now married to this beautiful lady of Islam and she was married on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which she would mention to the other mothers of Islam, the wives of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that your marriage was done on earth and my marriage was already pre-selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She was a very generous, kind and compassionate person. In fact, when she would sit and she would distribute, she helped so many people in her life Sayyida Zainab helped so many people in her life that when she passed on, many people were found crying. And when they were asked, what is the reason? They said, who is going to take care of us? Who is going to look after us? She was the benefactress of so many people. She was the patron of so many people. 
and therefore they all missed her when she left from this world. She was amongst those that also migrated for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when she was forced and she left her home then Abu Sufyan captured and he took their home. Sayyida Zainab was amongst those personalities that was very pious and would dedicate her time for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, subhanallah, she would say, when it came to Zainab, she would say, there is no woman that I have seen working for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing things for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than Sayyida Zainab. Sayyida Zainab wanted to get closer and closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who says this? Bibi Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. In fact also, when there was the time when there was an accusation on Lady Aisha, Bibi Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Remember at the time when she was left behind and people started bad-mouthing her and telling the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa she wanted to have an affair and etc, etc. In the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa these evil-minded people existed. So we can understand that today when someone speaks bad about us, then it is just something that was from the past. We need to correct ourselves and we need to go forward in life. When everyone would not stand with Aisha and very few, illa ma sha Allah. It was very few people standing with Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. When the whole world went against her, it seemed as if everyone was against her. But when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa came to Zainab and he said, Oh Zainab, I cannot imagine. What do you think? What is your opinion about Aisha? Remember one wife speaking of the other wife, Allahu Akbar. And you would assume that Zainab would want to now take the position of Aisha. So she would badmouth Aisha so she could be number one. But it wasn't about competition. Zainab said, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh my husband, please keep me out of these discussions. For indeed, Wallah, I know that Aisha is an Allah-fearing, Allah-conscious person. And this is not befitting the quality of Aisha. Leave me out of this discussion. So at the time when very few people supported Bibi Aisha, then amongst them one was Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyida Zainab was this person that she always visited the poor and those that were struggling and those that needed assistance. In fact, it is mentioned that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam would love to sit in the house of Sayyida Zainab and he would spend little extra time. And the reason of this was because she had honey. And the Nabi Wasallam loved honey. And this honey was, had a beautiful taste. So the Nabi Wasallam would spend extra time while she would drizzle the honey in the mouth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was the special quality of Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyida Zainab passed on. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is mentioned again by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first amongst you who will pass away after me, after my physical demise from this mundane world, the first amongst you would be the one who has the longest hands. So everyone started comparing, you know, and they all took the literal meaning that uh, Zainab had a short hand. And Zainab was a short person, so uh, definitely she won't go. And when she passed on, she was the first to pass on after Rasul from the wives of the Nabi Wasallam. So how come Zainab? It is only because Zainab had the longest arm, didn't mean literal arm. It meant in giving, in charity, in, in giving. She was so much in love of giving for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that she gave everything for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. In fact, when she passed on, she was at the age of 53. And when she left this world, before she could pass on and she felt that she is going to meet her maker, she took her kafan and she handed it over and she said to the people that this is my kafan. I do not wish anyone must spend money for my kafan. This is the kafan 
that is I have prepared and kept ready when I pass on this is what I want to be shrouded in this was her taqwa that she prepared for her burial as well and the janazah salah was performed by Sayyidina Amirul Mu'mineen Umar al Farooq radiallahu ta'ala an and she was then placed in Jannatul Baqi to rest as the mothers of the believers this was the life of Sayyida Zainab bint Jahsh radiallahu ta'ala anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her the strength, a grant, a grant us the strength and ability to learn from the lives of this pious lady of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her the highest status of Jannah. And may she reap all the benefits for dedicating her life for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Join me next week, same time, same place, where we will learn the the lifestyle of the next wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sayyida Juvairia radiyallahu ta'ala anha until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh